I think we have to separate out a couple of strands there. Number one, if you're going to talk about the efficacy of, of workers owning the means of production, are we talking about the government owning the means of production, or are we talking about workers owning the means of production? Because if you're talking about the government, that is wildly untrue, the last statement that you just made that it's effective. When the government owns the means of production, generally everything blows. Okay, that, that's, that's actually the story of Cuba, that is the story of Venezuela. The, the democratic socialist countries in Norway are generally not owned, except, well, uh, Norway is an exception in which the government owns a lot of stock in various companies, but those companies are run along free enterprise lines. They're not run along redistributionist lines, actually. Uh, and they also happen to have a massive sovereign oil wealth fund. But if you look at countries like, like Denmark, for example, there's still enormous private ownership of business. This is true in most of the uh, most of the Nordic and Scandinavian countries. Anyway. Uh, and when you, if you're talking about you know workers owning a business together, and for I mean, I am a worker at my company. I own my business with another person who owns the company with me, and a couple of investors. The investors have sunk their labor, which they made money from. Right? Money is just a, is just a tangible trade for labor, and they took that money and they invested it in us. So I, like, is Bill Gates not a worker in his own company? He invented the company. So I'm, I'm, and, and I'm also wondering how the worker is not owning his own labor when he freely chooses to alienate that labor in exchange for pay. Like, it, it, the, my problem with socialism is that, is that it is essentially somebody subjectively deciding the value of your own labor. The beautiful thing about the free market is that you don't get to subjectively decide what your labor is worth. Right? You can't go major in something useless and then come to me and say, I want $100,000 a year for my useless major so I can dig holes in the ground, right? That, that, we, we all recognize that's stupid. But the, la the labor value of theory, uh, which is, I mean, the, the, um, the uh, value of labor theorem, it's been a long day. Uh, the, 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 um, the labor, yes, the labor theory of value, my goodness. Uh, the labor theory of value, which is that the amount of work you put into something dictates the value of the thing is a bunch of crap. If I spend all day making mud pies outside, that's an awful lot of work. It's also completely useless. The way that you actually determine the value of work is by trading it for somebody else's work in a fully voluntary fashion. So if you're asking whether I'm okay with, for example, private sector unions, workers get together and they go to the owner and they say, we want more of the profit margin. Sure, as long as you're not kneecapping somebody.